We would have no examples in the Earth's history in which we have changed the atmospheric composition this rapidly. Uh, the changes of sea level from glacial to interglacial times are associated with the changes of the Earth's orbital elements, which occur over millennial time scales. And we cannot even measure a lag between the changing forcings, the changing temperatures, and sea level change. So it doesn't look like ice sheets really have that much inertia. Uh, we just don't have a very good way to uh, estimate how fast ice sheets can, can melt. Now, there are ice sheet models, but you should not imagine that these are like atmosphere and ocean models, where we have models that are based on fundamental equations of of uh, conservation of energy, conservation of mass, ideal gas law, and those models reproduce quite well the ocean circulation, the atmospheric circulation, but in contrast, ice sheet models are primitive. Um, there's a recent very valuable paper by Pollard et al., which adds in some processes into their model. Um, hydrofracturing and, and cliff failure, and they suddenly find that their calculated sea level rise changes from 2 meters to 17 meters. So it just shows, you know, that ice sheet models still have a lot, uh, a lot of development that's needed. So we don't, that's why what we do in our paper is focus more on the empirical data for what's actually happening in, uh, in the ocean and uh, in the ice sheets, and we see that they're beginning to change quite rapidly. And if we just assume, well, that rate of change might continue for a few more decades, then we get enormous consequences.